Hey, I'm Christy. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing video from my flower farm shipment from Jolly Farmer. And I'm gonna share what varieties I have brought in and show you exactly how they are shipped. And I will be telling you also how the whole thing works for ordering flowers on a flower farm. So stay tuned. I'll see you back here in a bit. Exciting. My Jolly Farmer is uh, order is in. I just picked it up. We'll see what it looks like. It was 30 below Celsius, so we'll see. We'll see what they look like, but I'm pretty excited. We'll see what's in them. So in today's shipment, I received 2,855 plugs. These here are stock. The type of stock is called hotcake stock. And I ordered three flats of them. And so there are 485 plugs per flat of these. So there's quite a few of these stock. They're really pretty, loved them. They were a great hit this spring, past spring and I can't wait to have them growing again. Some of the other ones I had ordered was Silver Dollar Eucalyptus. I ordered two trays of those. There was 140 plugs per tray. I ordered some 
Julieta Blue Lysianthus and some Roseanne Brown Lysianthus, some Flare Yellow Lysianthus, Flare White Lysianthus, and Flare Deep Blue, as well as a Advantage Cherry Sorbet. Last but not least, a Flare Deep Rose, also a Lysianthus. So this is the second year that I have ordered from Jolly Farmer. Jolly Farmer is a company that is, they, they basically supply anyone um, who is in the market for buying wholesale flowers. They sell them uh, flowers all over the place. They sell in the States, they sell in Canada, but the company is based out of Canada and they are their home base is in New Brunswick. These flowers all came from New Brunswick and they shipped on Monday. I live in Northern Alberta, Canada, which is way, way, way north in the Northern region. Um, so transportation of stuff like this is really challenging. One of our biggest concerns on Monday is it was like 34 below Celsius here. Um, it was cold and we had a wind chill of negative 42 degrees Celsius. and. We were very concerned because even in trucks um, that are heated, sometimes it gets so cold in, and the wind chills are so, are so brutal that even with heat, it will still freeze. Um, but for the most part, I'm really happy with the way they arrived. We'll just take a look here. Um, these guys are definitely ready to plant and that's how they ship them. They ship them ready to plant. And a lot of these ones, I will be planting directly into the ground in my greenhouse. And then there's a whole bunch of them that I'm potting up and I will be growing them on under grow lights or in my greenhouse on tables so that we can actually pot them up outside as soon as the ground is ready to receive them. And then I will put a row cover over top of them and heat cables if I need to. Um, the earlier, the better that I can plant these out in the field or I might actually plant them in raised beds if I can get some made in time, but likely we're just going to get them out in the field and I will pot them up. Some of them I may sell. I may have a small seedling sale. Um, I always have people coming here in the beginning of the year asking for potted plants, um, wanting to buy something, wanting to take something home and grow it along with me. So I may have, you know, a half dozen or so potted to sell if anyone is interested in doing that um, when they come to visit the farm so um, anyway the the plants they the first mode of transportation to get to the northern part of our province is they were shipped FedEx now FedEx brought them to Edmonton and then from Edmonton Rosano Transport grabbed them and they brought them all the way here to Manning Alberta and then I was able to go pick them up. It was nice because they had both of my boxes in the office waiting for me. Um, Rosano does a really good job. I'm always really happy with their service when they bring up um, any type of flowers. The shipping wasn't bad either. So I'll tell you what they caught, the, the grand total was for all of these plants and what the shipping was. So the shipping to New Brunswick to Manning, Alberta, this may surprise you. So and it costs $128 for shipping for freight fees. They do it as a like a transportation charge is usually boxed in with like how they fill their boxes because they do they do offer free shipping when you have so many plants. Um, the shipping is really reasonable and I think it's just because they have they ship so much. They have really good contracts um, and which makes it much more affordable for a small farmer like me a small scale flower farmer like me that is able to you know get the stuff the great thing about this company is they also have vegetables and and herbs so if you're doing market gardening or you're setting up a little um you know you're, you're setting yourself up so that you can um, have all your starts sent in and plant them right away it is reasonable for shipping it is fairly reasonable for the affordability of the plants as well so I had to order these plants in November. I had my order in November. And what I what they do is they offer a prepayment option. So you can prepay for your order. And when you do prepay for your order, they will offer you a 3% discount. So I was able to pay my order 
Um, I ordered it and paid for it right away. So I was able to get 3% off of my entire order, which was, you know, very helpful. Um, not really, you know, it doesn't make, it's not a huge difference, but it does make a substantial difference when you have this vol volume of plants. I was really happy with that. So the grand total for me to have it sh with shipping and the cost of everything all together with these two boxes, which I'll tell you, there was 13 trays of plants, um, like the hotcakes, for an example, the hotcakes um, stock. In each tray, there's 485 plugs. So I have three of them. <laughs> there's a lot of plants there. Um, each of the trays of eucalyptus has 140. I have two of them. Um, each of the of the lisianthus, there are trays of 140. I have multiple of some of them and then multiple color variations. So um, there's a lot of plugs here. It was like almost 3,000 plugs total that I had ordered. And the, to the grand total, including tax and shipping, was $1,560.86. And and I had to have that, you know, that was, that needed to be paid for before the next, like this season. So I had to pay for it from last season to have it for this season, which this is a lot of plants. When you look at the number of plants that there are here, it's a very wise investment to buy plugs because, um, you know, just for Lysianthus alone, to, to actually grow yours from seed, you have to start like to get this size of plant, I would have to start these in November. Um, and I don't want to be growing stuff in November on grow shelves because you they're finicky. They they take a lot of effort. Um, and to get this size of a Lysianthus takes a long time and perfect conditions. So quality, you know, when I if I'm I'm looking at my plants and in comparison to the ones I grew myself last year and these ones. Um, the ones that I got last year, they outperformed the ones that I had grown from seed. They were flowering sooner. They were, they didn't have any, um, like some of them I actually got two cuts from, um, which was nice. And, you know, they didn't have any really substantial issues. The one thing I did notice is I went with um, the flare series this year last year i had flare and abc series now the reason i i loved the abc series i series i thought they were absolutely stunning however i found the um flare series to be more profitable for two reasons the first reason was um I had an issue with a pathogen. They were really susceptible to psyllium wilt. And the other, like the flare series, I did not have as much issue. I had a couple plants that I lost to that wilt from, it's a pathogen in the soil. They were just healthier, they were stronger, they had a better immune system, um, like a better immunity to that pathogen. And they were able to recover and um, not be affected in the same way as the flowers that were in the ABC series. The ABC series, I seem to have a lot more pest um, issues with as well. Just, um, they were grown the same way, they were grown in the same soil, they were grown next to each other, sometimes intermingled with each other. And the Flare series outperformed the ABC series. I also was able to cut multiple stems from the ABC or the the Flare series, where the ABC series I didn't. I did get a couple that produced multiple cuts, um, but I mostly found the Flare series did the best in my climate. Um, I think the ABC series had more beautiful flowers inside the greenhouse. I, I liked that variety. But the, in comparison, like apples and oranges, I just went with the ones that were the most profitable and I that were the least amount of work for me. And I found that to be the Flare series. So we'll see this year. Um, they look great. I'm really happy with it. These ones here are the Roseanne Brown. I did not order Roseanne Brown from them last year and I really regretted it. I did try to grow some and I lost some of them to some um, wilt and to some pest pressure. Um, and so I did I did lose some of my crop and then some watering and inconsist inconsistencies. I lost the ones that I had grown from seed. 
but that was, you know, more me um, just overlooking certain aspects of my farm. So this year I did buy a flat of the Roseanne Brown. So I'm, I think these ones will probably bloom the, the soonest. And these ones I never tried before. They are the Juliet Blue. They are a dwarf variety. And I, at first I didn't realize they were a dwarf. I just liked the blue and I knew that they were fast bloomers. So these are probably going to be um, it, some of these are going in my greenhouse for some earlier blooms and they are likely going to be more like, um, they're, they're going to be shorter to pair with some of the stock because the stock that the stock that I ordered, it does branch for me. This, this stock is very, um, heat resistant. So sorry, this is going to kick on and run for the lettuce, but the stock I, I found last year to have really good luck with it branching and i did get some pretty good stem length for the most part the stems are shorter but they are for like smaller little bowl arrangements so my florist does a lot of work in small little bowls like little fish like mini fish bowl kind of things or teacups and she does a lot of work with that the eucalyptus is one um i wasn't gonna put any in this year and i'm kind of i'm going to pot a lot of it up and I'm probably gonna sell some of it just because I ordered more than I think I have space for inside. I wanted to put some in hanging baskets and do an experiment that way, um, but I'm probably gonna pot some up and then I'll probably put some into some grow bags because that worked really well for me because then they, I could move them around. They were always like, eucalyptus takes up quite a bit of space and it's sort of like, it, we don't have a long enough season where it does really, really well just being outside. So I'm kind of like, it, it seemed to do really good for me in pots. And then the stuff I did have in the ground, it was okay, like, but it did just as well in pots. So I think I might just do that. Then I can control the water a little bit more because when we do have a rainy season, um, it's nice to be able to have better drainage for the eucalyptus. So. I don't know, we'll see. I do have some special orders for eucalyptus, so I'm gonna cater to that. But I might actually pot some up and sell it along with some of the lisianthus just to have. So my plan was when the daffodils and stuff were coming up, I'm hoping to have kind of like a farm visit day where I might have some, you know, make a little, set up a little spot where I can do kind of like a garage sale slash, you know, have some farm eggs for sale have a few little potted things for sale and stuff like that and just kind of like an open invite for people to come and see the farm because lots of people want to see the farm and it is a farm it's a working farm but it is kind of exciting to see all the new life um, and so I wanted to kind of have something here not as a seedling sale but people want to come and they want to support so that's where I'm struggling as a flower farmer the most is because people think because I have this commercial greenhouse that I bought from one of the commercial greenhouses so it used to be a commercial greenhouse they assume that I'm going to have stuff for sale so um, it's hard to explain to people that I'm a flower farm I don't have I don't sell bedding plants but when they come here they still expect like even if they understand that you are just a flower farm they still want to buy something that they can plant in their yard so that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm kind of like figuring it out this year, um, figuring it out what my market wants from me. Like they see the Lysianthus pictures from last year and they see that I'm growing it again this year. They want that in their yard too, but they want to buy, like they want to buy the cut flowers, but they don't want to cut their own. And so, you know, lots of places are like, why would you sell the potted plants if you're going to be selling those cut flowers? Aren't you taking your business away? It's like, no, you're not. Because there is not a single person I know who's growing beautiful lisianthus in their backyard is going to cut them down when they're enjoying it in their yard as a beautiful display. They would rather, if they have the option to go buy the cut flowers from someone else and enjoy the ones that they're growing in their backyard, then they would probably do that. It's really even hard for me to go out in the flower farm and cut them down because I'm enjoying them so much. Um, so I'm not worried about taking away business because Lysianthus are really hard to grow. They're not something that is actually available through our greenhouses locally. So this is a specialty thing 
because I mean, like, like I said, these were probably growing, started growing in October or November. They probably started these, I would say prop my guess based on, oh, this is S E S E. Oh, it must be Southeast. Sometimes the tags will say on there, but I'm guess it could be September. These plants are ready to go. They take 150 days. So yeah, it's very possible that they were, the seeds were sown in September or October. Um, to get plants this size. So, you know, you could see why they are a specialty flower. Anyway. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope you enjoyed today's unboxing video. If you are somebody who is looking into flower farming or, you know, you're, you're just, you're wanting to make some income on your homestead, this is a really great option. Um, selling cut flowers or even getting your market vegetables as starts. There are great options and um, my, my recommendation is Jolly Farmer for doing this stuff. This is not sponsored by the way. I just, uh, I really like this company. They have really great staff and they're, they're really interested in helping you succeed, which is really the best business model ever. So anyway, I hope that you're having a great day enjoying this video and enjoying all these little baby seedlings as much as I do. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.